Good morning, bad news. The United States is being occupied by a domestic military force with no external oversight, no accountability, and effectively no limits on their budget. So-called law enforcement organizations have long since outgrown any form of traditional policing and now unambiguously exist to maintain political power and protect the wealthy. Hi, I'm Dan from the internet for Good Morning Bad News, and we're going to talk about how the police are effectively an occupying military force, actively looting the United States. Before the 2000s, during the community policing era that followed the civil rights movement, law enforcement refocused on developing relationships within communities to address the problems facing those communities. But if you're under the age of 30, that doesn't seem like what cops do when they criminalize the unhoused, run over protesters, or kill unarmed people of color for minor or imagined crimes. It doesn't seem like what cops do because the community policing era ended on 9-11. In the aftermath of the Patriot Act and the newly created Department of Homeland Security, law enforcement began to transition to a sort of domestic counter-terrorist organization, and instead redefining themselves as an occupying force in neighborhoods that they treat like active combat zones. Now there are four big reasons why this transition has been so aggressive. The first is qualified immunity, which comes from a Supreme Court ruling in 1967 when a group of priests were arrested, some of them black, for eating lunch in a coffee shop. But when the facts of the case actually came in and it was blatantly obvious that the cop was wrong, the judge who found them guilty was wrong, and the statute that they were arrested under itself was unconstitutional, the Supreme Court ruled that none of those facts mattered. Cops and judges were immune from prosecution unless they knowingly violated the law. And as we see in the last year, it basically takes murder captured in 4K and the biggest civil rights protest in US history to overcome that basic hurdle. The second reason police are able to act with impunity is because, as it turns out, the most fundamental thing they're supposed to do, protect law-abiding citizens from harm, is actually not even in the job description. In 2005, the Supreme Court ruled in Castle Rock v. Gonzalez that police do not have a constitutional duty to protect a person from harm. The third piece the puzzle comes from police unions. And while we support unions against all powerful corporate employers, in this case, as public servants, police unions oppose accountability from their employers, you, the public. The problem here is when local governments try to make even minor changes towards increasing police accountability, the police in those communities use their legally granted discretion and immunity to target and punish the politicians that promote those policies. For example, in Minneapolis, the city council redirected 5% of the $180 million police budget to pay for nonviolent crime prevention programs and mental health crisis teams. In response, the fully staffed police department stopped responding to 911 calls, specifically in a single council member's district who had pushed for the budget change. It's actually insane when you realize that modern police unions are operating a mafia-like protection racket. If you don't give us the money we demand, we won't show up when you're in an emergency. On top of all the legal, political, and cultural power that police have in the United States, they've also spent the last 30 years transitioning from beat cops with nightsticks and crown vicks to fully militarized assault units with grenade launchers and tanks. And hey, it's probably not a huge surprise that this hyper-militarization of the police began with our favorite despicable ghoul, Ronald Reagan. In 1981, Reagan passed the Military Cooperation with Civilian Law Enforcement Agencies Act, which let civilian law enforcement use military facilities, equipment, and training under the guise of the war on drugs. And although there were initially some limits, after 9-11 it became a literal free-for-all. In the last 20 years, over $40 billion of equipment has been distributed to police departments with absolutely no oversight or management. So let's call it like it is. What we actually have in the United States is a violent, vengeful, and organized syndicate that cannot be controlled or held accountable by the public. They wield massive political power, siphon billions of dollars from our taxes without any oversight, brutalize marginalized communities that dare stand up against them in protest, and arm themselves with the same equipment as the most powerful military force in history. Perhaps it's our fault for thinking that protect and serve meant us and not them.